Todd, so good to have you here. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure, thank you. So Todd, headlines are certainly driving market action this year. How are you seeing that play out in the ETF space? Well, one of the key themes that we're seeing when we look at the data that we have at ETF Database, which is one of the two firms that I'm the head of research for, we're seeing disproportionately high exposure and interest in aerospace and defense-oriented ETFs. There previously was just one ETF among the top 100 ETFs that were searched on our platform up until February 23rd to start the year, and now there are four of them. Uh, iShares has the largest and most frequently focused product, the iShares U.S. Aerospace and Defense ETF, but there's a Spider product, an Invesco product, uh, as well as an ARC product that are gaining investor interest. And, and for understandable reasons, given the political tensions, the geopolitical tensions that are happening as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So in terms of other headlines, of course, you talk a lot about inflation and the Fed, which really ignited this rotation out of tech at the end of last year. Uh, do you think that uh, what's interest like in terms of tech exposure at this point? Are, are people wanting to start dipping their toes back in and are they doing so via ETFs? Well, they are. So Vanguard Information Technology ETF, which is VGT, uh, has been one of the more popular ETFs. It's consistently been popular. That gives you broad market cap weighted exposure to companies like Apple and Microsoft, but also some of the smaller companies that you wouldn't find that are outside of the S&P 500. But yes, technology has been one of those areas that has faced more challenges, particularly given rising interest rates. Technology companies tend to do less well uh, during a rise in rate environment, than the, and they don't benefit the same way that an aerospace and defense ETF that holds Lockheed Martin, that holds Raytheon, uh, that holds Boeing, those kind of companies that I mentioned earlier that are part of ITA or the Spider product XAR. Those are the two aer the most popular of those aerospace ETFs. That's been more popular than technology in the most recent weeks. Todd, the big call for this year, aside from volatility from many of the, the strategists that I spoke to, is that it's going to be or it is a stock pickers market. How has that impacted action that you've seen in ETFs? Well, I think year after year, we tend to see people who believe it's going to be a stock pickers market. There was recent data that came out from S&P Dow Jones indices that showed how hard it was for active managers to beat the S&P 500 uh, in 2021. And it was a very small percentage. And for in, indeed, 12 consecutive years, the average actively managed uh, large cap mutual fund failed to keep up with the S&P 500 that's tracked by IVV, VOO, and SPY. But yes, if you want to look for active management, there's certainly opportunities to do that using ETFs, uh, ARC. As we mentioned earlier, uh, that has a space exploration ETF. We, there's ways, obviously, to get thematic investing with ARC. And then we've recently been talking about with clients about dimensional funds and Avantis that have small cap uh, actively managed equity ETFs that we think can make sense in an environment where small cap managers have a chance to differentiate themselves versus the broader benchmark. Todd, I was just talking to Louis Cordon from AST about how retail investors have been cashing out of this market or, you know, fleeing this market and seeking safety in cash, whether or not that's smart in an inflationary environment is a different debate. But uh, just in terms of uh, safety plays, have you seen any interest, do you think, in ETFs because maybe they're a bit safer than having direct exposure to just one company? Right. So you would get that with the benefits of ETF. So, for example, Vanguard Short Term Corporate Bond ETF, the ticker is VCSH, is a good example. You get the benefits of diversification of investment grade credit companies with less interest rate sensitivity. That's an ETF that we think is, is warranting an investor attention. In a rising interest rate environment, this ETF is going to hold up better and have that credit quality that you would want uh, given times of uncertainty. So the, the Vanguard Corporate Short Term Bond ETF is one of those ETFs we're watching at ETF Trends. And how does this year's volume in terms of inflows, outflows compare to years prior? 
so last year was a high bar to offset to overcome. We saw over nine hundred billion dollars of net inflows into ETFs that broke the record that we saw in twenty twenty. We're unlikely to see another record in twenty twenty two, in part because fixed income ETFs are really not participating investors are being more cautious given the given the rising interest rate environment we are seeing strong demand into those broad core equity products like Vanguard S&P 500 we're seeing uh, interest in iShares core S&P 500 these building block oriented ETFs are increasingly being used by advisors that we talk to at ETF Trends and ETF Database, as well as individual investors. So we think it's going to be a good year for ETF adoption in 2022, but not as great a year as we saw in 2021. In terms of other ETFs, you've, you've mentioned quite a few, but that we should keep on our radar this year that maybe aren't, um, you know, aren't as exposed to certain headlines that we're seeing right now. What are you looking at? Yeah, so an another area that's a focus for us is dividends. They're an area where investors will rotate to from the equity perspective in times of uncertainty when you're concerned about inflation, which is something that we heard from advisors that responded to a recent survey that was part of a webinar that we did at ETF Trends, dividend strategies, and we're seeing it in the flows. So Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, VIG, has been popular. Uh, we've seen interest in HDV, which is an iShares uh, core high dividend ETF, and DVY, another one of those high dividend oriented ETFs. They're a good anchor for your portfolio to get some equity income, and we're hearing more about that from our clients. Yeah, I certainly like those income opportunities. Todd Rosenbluth, head of research at ETF Trends, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.